As we begin our first look at the seventh chapter of the book of Romans, many people think these verses in Romans 7 are confusing and hard to understand. In fact, some feel it's, they're very hard to understand. And, and some people, because of that, say, well, you just ought to go from chapter 6 to chapter 8 because chapter 8 is just so great. But I don't believe you ought to do that. I think that every verse and every word in the Bible is inspired of God and that there's something to learn from them. And in, in other words, they're there to teach us something. So Paul has been comparing and contrasting in the previous six chapters. He has been comparing a non-Christian or a person before Christ to what it means to be a Christian. He's used a lot of different analogies. He said, well, a person who's not a Christian is associated with Adam as in the Garden of Eden. But now you are a Christian. You're not in Adam. You are in Christ. He also used the analogy of a king ruling over. He said, before you became a Christian, sin was like a tyrannical king who reigned over you. Now, however, you have a new king, King Jesus. He's already used the example of a master and a slave. He said, before you were a Christian, it was like sin was your master and you were a slave to sin. But now you have a new master and you're a servant to Jesus Christ. Well, he's going to use this analogy again. He's going to compare a person who's not a Christian like someone who's married, and it's a bad marriage, to somebody we're going to call in this series Mr. Law. When I say someone's married to Mr. Law, I mean they're still bound up in the concept that they can appease God, that they can get God's acceptance by what they do, by keeping the rules, thou shalt, thou shalt not, do this, don't do that. Some people are married to Mr. Law, and they think that's how they can relate to God. Well, the Bible says that's a bad marriage. Instead, we're going to see in this series where the Bible says there's another marriage. You can be married to Jesus Christ. You can have a relationship with Jesus that's like a marriage, and that's the one you should strive for. Now, you have to understand he's using an analogy here. And if you miss the point of the analogy, you've missed it all. In other words, he's not necessarily saying something about marriage. Rather, he's saying something about the Christian life. Paul uses the word law 28 times in this chapter. And as we go through, I'm going to use this analogy of a marriage. Do you not know, brothers? For I am speaking to men who know the law. Let, let's, let's back up and, 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 and read it again. Do you not know, brothers? For I am speaking to men who know Mr. Law. Mr. Law has authority over a person for as long as he lives. For example, by law, a married woman is bound to her husband as long as he is alive. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. So then, if she marries another man while her husband's still alive, she's called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is released from that law and is not an adulteress, even though she marries another man. Now, before you think that verses 2 and 3 are doctrine about divorce and remarriage, which they aren't, note he only uses that as an example. So let's keep reading verse 4. So, my brothers, you also died to Mr. Law through the body of Christ, that you might belong, that means in the sense of being married, to another. Now, who is this other? To him who was raised from the dead. We know that to be Jesus. In order that we might bear fruit to God. For when we were controlled by the sinful nature, the sinful passion aroused by Mr. Law, they were at work in our bodies, so we bore fruit for death. But now, by dying to what once bound us, we have been released from Mr. Law, so we serve in the new way of the Spirit, and not in the old way of the written code. I think about everyone watching and listening has studied English grammar, and you understand the different expressions and uses of speech. Do you understand what a metaphor is? A metaphor is when you're talking about one thing and compare it to another to make a point, and you make a mistake if you pay attention to the metaphor itself 
instead of the meaning. And I'm going to explain this in greater detail next time. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to teach us and are teaching us. Lord, I pray that we would understand this concept of being married to Mr. Law. And as we dive into this and see why it's a bad marriage, I pray that we would use your word as a mirror to see where we're at and that you would expose our hearts and our true desires and, and where we are in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Tell me I'm forgiven and free. Oh, I tried and tried to rectify my hopeless situation.